Saturday here at the 2011 RoboBoat Competition, sponsored by AUVSI Foundation and ONR. We got 15 teams in the competition this year, including international teams from as far away as Taiwan and Indonesia. And today, it's do or die as the teams try to qualify for a spot in the finals. We've seen plenty of triumph and tribulation here on the first day of qualifying, with one team attempting almost all the advanced tasks, while several others initially struggled just to get through the first gates. The difficulty of this year's parallel course arrangement was underscored as computer vision and technical issues frustrated many of the teams, with their boats having trouble staying on the correct course. If these boats weren't driven by robots, we might have seen some sobriety tests administered as boats swerved all over the pond. But we also saw some thrilling successes as teams performed autonomous feats that were nothing short of awesome. Villanova had to abort their first qualifying run to recode, and things looked grim on the second as they spent a long, desperate time dead in the water. But with precious minutes ticking away, the boat took off at last and made it through both gates before drifting out of the channel. Old Dominion University had plenty of thrust, but then had problems using it as their computer vision system mistook green water for the green buoys and red brick reflections for the red ones. In the end, they made it through the start gate and remained hopeful for the finals. Georgia Tech Savannah dominated the thrust stakes. At 38.5 pounds, they retained the power title with almost double the nearest competitor. Struggling at first with the gates, their second attempt took them well into the channel. Not wanting to push their luck, they locked in the points. Overall, it was quick, but we accomplished what we came out to accomplish, so I think it was a good run. Coming all the way from Indonesia, Dipo Nagoro also had the lightest boat at only 29.5 pounds. Initial camera problems kept them veering off course, but at the last minute they switched cameras and kept a dead straight course through the gates and past the first channel buoy. It was one problem after another for Embry-Riddle, with a dead computer in the morning followed by sunlight changes in the late afternoon. They bounced back in true engineering style by putting a laptop on board and sailing through the start gate, but the parallel practice course proved just too attractive. Cedarville was another team suffering technical issues, spending most of their 20 minute qualifying time dead in the water due to a communications problem. They made it through the start gate but will be looking for big improvements in their second session tomorrow. Do you think you'll be ready for, for another run to get through the speed gate as well? Definitely, yes. Stevens had several good runs right off the bat, reaching the first yellow obstacle every time. Risking the points on multiple attempts, they were rewarded with a run past one obstacle and three channel markers. UCF's boat started off slow, but then showed why they're consistently a top team by cranking it past the first obstacle before the robots seem to get a bit distracted. They'll be trying to work out what happens so they can work on doing better in their second session tomorrow. Until then, they have a decent stash of points in the bag. Well, in a few hours we have our practice run, so we can get in there and run through some of those logs, see if uh, our vehicle can identify the buoys better, and then we'll try again tomorrow morning for our next qualifying match. The US Naval Academy looked like they were in big trouble at first. Their boat swung away from the start gate so many times it looked like it was dodging it on purpose. When it finally made it through the gates, it immediately seemed to go after a passing swan. They could have been happy with those points, but it's not the Navy way to be timid. Instead, they risked their whole score not once but twice. On the final run, the boat swerved through the gates like a drunken sailor, but their risk paid off when it ended up successfully in the channel. We'll just iron some things out, change some of the gains around, what accounts counts buoy, what it doesn't think buoy, and hopefully it'll work better tomorrow. At only 46 pounds of weight, but pumping out nearly 19 pounds of thrust, the lean and mean Georgia Tech Atlanta boat gave the crowd a true nail-biter. After sacrificing all their early points, they started cutting things off the boat. A rover and a float were both cut loose. Disaster struck near the end though when they lost control of a motor. Fortunately, they still have one more session tomorrow. Florida Atlantic made the strategic decision to gather points in this qualifying run with just the weigh-in and thrust test components, and then to use the rest of the run to log data under remote control. They'll use their second run tomorrow as their first autonomous mission. They're living on the edge. Rhode Island's run was the most epic of the entire day. After initially refusing to even move, their boat made it all the way to the channel end, docked with several of the task stations and returned all the way to the start gate. The water cannon and ball arm were both broken though, so they have a lot of work ahead of them before their next qualifying run. The boat <laughs> did not work five minutes before we went in the water. We were programming it while walking up to the dock and we got started late. It was unbelievable. Taiwan's NCKU were worried before they even got in the water as their boat had mysteriously gained 8 pounds, indicating a possible water leak. It got through both gates but then refused to give up on the first channel buoy, looping around furiously. The team stopped it there in order to lock in the points. Virginia Tech encountered total frustration as the robot seemed to be confused as to which course to enter. It simply wouldn't stop veering right to the practice course. As the clock ran out, the unhappy team ended with only the start gate and a long night ahead of it. Disaster struck last year's champions, University of Michigan as well, as their boat had software problems that wouldn't even let it leave the dock. The pressure's on for the champs, as due to thunderstorms and problems, they have had no autonomous runs yet, and they've only got one qualifying session left. 
we actually weren't able to get on the water at all yesterday because of the rain. So uh, we've only been able to do some RC testing and mapping the course. So autonomously, we've only gotten to about the, start, uh, the starting gates. All 15 teams have had at least one qualifying run today. Five teams have had both their runs and 10 more get a second shot tomorrow. So any team could potentially still have a place in the finals. Don't miss the rest of the qualifying action tomorrow, as well as, of course, our live webcast beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You know where to go for the world's premier robotic boat competition, roboboat.org.